What everybody asks me about the most is my tattoos. So here's a tattoo tour. Okay, my tattoos. They're very polarized. You either love them or you hate them. Do I care either way? No, because I love them and that's all that matters. <laughs> okay, first let's make this a little bit more cozy. Oh my God, this is so heavy. Working on my muscle. I started getting tattoos right at 18. And when I mean right at 18, I was counting down the days. A lot of people in my family have tattoos, so for me it was kind of normal. There was never really a stigma. I've always looked at tattoos as a permanent way of self-expression. Do I regret any of my tattoos? No. I look at it as in that moment, that was the most important thing to me. And that is what I wanted on my body forever. When I started to get tattoos, single needle fine line tattoos weren't really a thing yet. My first couple tattoos, were not really that thought out, <laughs> which is fine. Again, like I still love that. I find it really sweet because in that moment, that's what I wanted. My very first tattoo, I got a sun and a crescent moon on the inside of my feet. And I will not be showing them because I'm not giving that out for free. Absolutely not. My next tattoo after that, I went with one of my best friends and I literally thought of it the same day. And here she is. It's a very tiny little peace sign on my back and I still love it. It's just kind of funny to me that I was like, Peace sign, done. It wasn't super well done. I literally went to this random tattoo shop in my hometown, and I guess that would be one thing I would change about it. Probably would have gone to a, a cleaner, better place. <laughs> I had just moved to Los Angeles, and I knew that I wanted another tattoo. I started to follow some tattoo shops in the area, and this is when the fine line, kind of like minimal tattoos were starting to roll out, just for some context. There was this guest artist from South Korea who was visiting one of the shops only for a limited time and her work was incredible. I put this tattoo right on the back of my arm. The thing that went wrong with this is I went to the beach like three days after getting my tattoo and you're not supposed to do that. But again, I was young, dumb, who cares? Also, as far as longevity, I got this tattoo in 2018. That's what, roughly five years ago? For her to get that really fine, minimal look, she used a diluted ink, so it was very gray. And as far as my complexion, I can get a little olivey, and I don't know if that's agreed with my skin over the years. I've had this touched up maybe two times and it's still really faint. So that's something to consider when you're getting these like fine line, simple tattoos. But I really love it. I feel like it kind of got me excited for tattoos and I feel like it was the perfect touch of femininity that I needed. After that, I was like, okay, I want tattoos. I'm ready, I'm not even scared anymore. My next tattoo was this butterfly. And actually a lot of people have butterfly tattoos, so it's kind of sweet. I feel like I match with a bunch of people in the world. After that, I got this, this, and a small tattoo on my wrist all at the same time. This is a flower on my shoulder. I really loved this placement. I knew I wanted to just put something here. This tattoo is in French. It translates to in English, a boat on the ocean. The composer is Maurice Ravel, and he is truly spectacular. I think a lot of people know his work from the movie Call Me By Your Name. It's some of the most life-changing classical music I've ever heard, and that's why I wanted it on my body. Again, forever. I've also loved listening to classic music for majority of my life, so that's in a nutshell what that symbolizes for me. I also got these little tiny guys. They're so delicate. The inspiration for this was The Second Star to the Right, Peter Pan, which is a Disney movie that I absolutely love. And I just thought on the wrist here it looked really beautiful because it looks kind of like a bracelet. Ooh, and then I got this one on my arm. It says City of Stars. I wanted this to kind of match this in a way. I think a lot about placement and I think it's something that's very crucial. And I really like how compositionally that kind of balanced each other. City of Stars refers to a song that's in La La Land. And I got this around when I moved to Los Angeles. And this was my kind of ode or love letter to Los Angeles. After that, I got this tattoo. This says 108. This is for my first apartment in LA. My husband and I both have this tattoo 108 together. Okay, after that, I got a big tattoo. This is probably my most complimented, most expensive tattoo. This is done by an artist named Toddy Compton. I was on her waiting list for a very long time and she's actually a hand-poked artist. So what that means is this tattoo was done by hand and not a traditional tattoo machine. And it took very, very long. Although it was a very beautiful and intimate experience, the artist fully customized this for me. She promised me that she would never tattoo it on another individual, which I think is really cool. So all of her tattoos are a one and done situation. But because it was hand poked, that is how it looks so delicate. And this tattoo is sort of to represent my two black cats that I have and sort of me, I guess. My cats, I love them 
so much. Like I, I can't even express, but yeah, I, I absolutely love this tattoo. Okay, intermission, snack break. And this tattoo I heavily researched because there's so many Mickey Mouses out there that a lot of people draw themselves. And I wanted it to be original artwork that the artist was referencing. So I found the original sketch from the Disney animator. And I wanted it to look very pencil sketched and kind of loose and beautiful. And I think they nailed it. I have always loved animation. I hope to work in that kind of industry eventually. And Fantasia may be my number one Disney movie. I don't know. It's hard to say, but I think it's up there. After that, then I got my dancing skeleton tattoo. And this tattoo I kind of have a love-hate relationship with, to be honest. The tattoo artist was not nice. My previous tattoo artist had moved away very far and I was kind of trying to find someone new. I never went back to this guy. I wanted the tattoo a lot smaller. He kind of like bullied me into doing it bigger. And I was already there in the moment. You might think, hey, stand up for yourself, say something. When you're in like a tattoo, very macho space, sometimes it's hard and like anxiety inducing to like really speak up about what you want to say. And getting a tattoo is already kind of like nerve wracking because it's your body forever and it gets confusing when someone throws you a curveball of, hey, it's actually gonna be bigger than you expected. So, I mean, it's partially on me, but this guy was not nice. After that, then I got this chair of tattoo, and this is a matching tattoo with one of my best friends. I love how he looks like kind of like a tough guy cherub. Then I got my hand tattoo. I had already been getting tattoos at this point. I wasn't nervous, but this tattoo really made me nervous because I heard hand tattoos hurt a lot. But luckily it was so small that it honestly went by really fast. I am right-handed and since I'm an artist and illustrator, I wanted to kind of put something on that hand that I do create with. And that's sort of my way of marking that. I also think a lot of artists struggle with imposter syndrome, and I definitely do. There are some days that I'm like, what am I doing? Am I even an artist? What's going on? What am I doing with my life? And I think being an artist is kind of like a way of life. It's hard for me to remember that sometimes, but having it on my hand sometimes helps. Oh, I almost forgot about this one. This tattoo is actually kind of funny. Totally impulsive. I got this tattoo the same day I thought of it. Oh my, I don't even want to say it out loud. I was watching Game of Thrones, and I had finished the show and I had really buried a lot of my life and time into the show that it kind of took over my reality and I was so devastated by the show ending that I was like I'm gonna get a sword. I'm gonna get needle. Needle is a sword in the show that one of the characters uses. I like Game of Thrones, yeah, but I'm not like this hardcore fan like I haven't even thought about it in probably like a year, but I, I do love this tattoo. I think it looks super cool. It's just so funny to me that I was that devastated by the show ending that that triggered this idea. Anyways, then I got three tattoos all at once. I got these dice, this little girl walking, and this little piece on my hand. This tattoo artist is incredible. His designs are unreal. You've probably recognized them, but a lot of people steal his work and it's sad. I got these dice because I love Vegas. <laughs> it sounds funny to say because a lot of people don't like Vegas and I get it, it's kind of a weird dark place. But I actually have a lot of family memories in Vegas. I go to Vegas once a year with my dad and stepmom and we go to the pools, we go to nice dinners, we stay at a nice hotel and we just always feel very glamorous and fun and I actually do like gambling. And also the dice are just cute, I think it looks cute. The little person walking, I chose that one because she had a little backpack on her and she was carrying a camera. I picked that in a time in my life when I was starting school and I was 23 being a freshman for the first time. It was really weird and scary and yeah, that kind of symbolizes where I was at at that time. But with this tattoo artist, you just flip through his book and pick things and I knew I wanted one of the little people and I was drawn to that one because she had a little backpack and I thought it was cute. As far as the little heart design, I totally picked that because I loved how this looks. So there's honestly no meaning, and a couple of my other tattoos don't really have these like deep meta meanings, and I think that's okay. Picking tattoos more off of aesthetics and looks is sometimes a good call. I know some people that got really deep tattoos, and they're like, I wish I wouldn't have put that on my body forever because I'm constantly reminded of like a negative time or like a person that passed away. So. Yeah, it's like sometimes be careful, but everyone's different, so who cares? My last and most recent tattoo is this little pokey heart. I love this one. I think it feels like very rock and roll, like edgy yet feminine. And like I just said, there's literally no meaning to this tattoo other than I thought the design was beautiful. I have two more tattoos that I will not be showing because it's on my feet. <laughs> Again, not, not for free. 
absolutely not not for free but i actually experimented with tattooing i've actually tattooed myself and a couple other people i honestly really love it i just couldn't find that much time and devotion that it really needs as a craft and a medium you have to bury a lot of hours into it and with school and work i just i couldn't give that and that is it i think i got them all i'm very satisfied with my tattoos i don't have an itch to really get more at the moment i'm sure there might be a time later on but as far as right now i'm really happy and i love them if you have any tattoo questions please let me know i'm very open and transparent and i know getting tattoos is very scary and nerve-wracking sometimes so if anyone needs any help let me know. Thanks for watching.